This weekend, Americans are celebrating Juneteenth, which is now a federal holiday. For those who don't know what Juneteenth is, it marks the final emancipation of enslaved black Americans following the Civil War. We're also one year out now from the movement launched by the killing of George Floyd. That national conversation on racial justice has reached a complicated point. And here this morning to talk about it are Jerry Ann Bogus of the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire and Ryan Terrell, who serves on the State Board of Education. Thank you both for joining us. And Jerry Ann, let's start with you. First, Juneteenth gaining national holiday status. Status. What does that tell us about where we are in this process? It tells us that we're at a starting point um, in the in a national dialogue on um, our history, our history of enslavement, and um, where we can go from there. It's just the beginning of the dialogue. It raises awareness of the holiday, making it making it federal. Juneteenth. Now people can actually start looking. Uh, researching, talking about it, and being aware, more aware of it. It is the starting point of a dialogue, but it's still just, uh, it's, our racial issues and challenges are still there, but it gives us an opportunity to start talking about them at a national level. Ryan, what does making Juneteenth a national holiday do, especially from the education perspective? It's such a significant place because what it shows for me is that we're continuing the progress of having conversations about racial equity and racial justice in this country for generations. It shows that we are continuing to improve the conditions and improve the knowledge about minorities in this country. And so for me, it's a, it's a great day. And from an education perspective, I highly encourage teachers to give the history of Juneteenth and give the context and the background and every piece of information to their students about what Juneteenth actually means and why this is a great piece of progress for us all. A big discussion point in the state right now is what's going on at the state house and the language going into the budget about the so-called divisive concepts. The target obviously is critical race theory and some have argued that uh, in our national and state discourse we've kind of lost the thread of what critical race theory actually means and we're not really f is collectively fighting over what we're all talking about uh, as being the same thing. But anyway, you bring different perspectives to this. Jerry Ann, what do you think about this language going into the budget? First of all, I don't think it belongs in the budget. Uh, uh, trying to put a, 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 a to circle around an idea of critical race theory is not a budget item. It's a social issue that we have to talk about. It's a historical issue. It's a, a way of us being in the world, and it has nothing to do with the monetary values around it. So it really should not be in the budget. It is a place for dialogue. It's a place for community dialogue. It's a place for historical recording, and it's a place for telling the truth. So it's not a place for being in the budget. And, and Jerry, and follow up to you here. If your organization was to seek public funding or some kind of state level support, would, would this, if it becomes law now, invalidate that in some way? It, we would not be able, from the, my understanding, we would not be able to um, get funding for a lot of the things that we do because we are talking about re-examining our history and retelling the stories that um, the mythologies of what America is in a different way. We're looking at a truth, we're unearthing true stories where that have not been told. Ryan, you bring a different perspective to this and you've written extensively on it uh, with public op-eds. Explain how you feel about this. I have to agree with Jerry Ann that I don't agree that it should be in the budget. I, I don't believe that this bill should have been a trailer bill to our budget is not the appropriate place for it. However, I do agree with what the bill is trying to achieve because what critical race theory is doing is allowing race to be the primary lens that people view the world and society and our American history. And from my experience, it's not positive for our children to learn that they are in an adversarial relationship with the world due to immutable characteristics. The bill, as it reads right now, passed by the Senate, is blocking any effort to propagate the idea that America is inherently racist or any group of people based off of immutable characteristics are uh, better than or worse than another group of people for immutable characteristics. So while I don't agree that it should be a trailer bill to the budget, I do agree that we should stop the propagation of this idea as much as we possibly can. Ryan, you're a freedom and liberty guy. Why should a government be in the business of trying to stamp out an idea? 
Well, I believe that because the government plays a role, obviously, in our public education. Our teachers are our greatest resource and our children are our greatest asset. And because the government plays that distinct role in public education, they have to create safeguards that allow um, positive education, reinforced education to enhance the bright minds of our kids. But also we need to instill safeguards that stop our children from taking on ideologies that are not positive to their growth. Um, kids that are being taught that their classmates or other citizens and the people around them are inferior or superior to them based off race is not how we progress a racial conversation. It's not how we move forward as a modern society. And it's certainly not how we reunite as Americans. Jerry Ann, last year at this time, people were marching in the streets for change. And I think if you were able to travel back in time and talk to them and say, hey, a year from now, we're going to be involved in a very complicated and sometimes confusing legal and sort of, you know, um, idea discussion around this thing called critical race theory and, and, and where bias comes from, they'd go, what? Uh, so how do we get back to a position of clarity on, on what's going on here? First of all, history doesn't lie. History is there, it tells a story. And race is a construct, it's a social construct. The whole idea of critical race theory is really looking back at a history that tells us where we have determined, where we have put in law that black people are three-fifths human in order to keep a financial institution, in order to make wealth for a country. So that's that's not something that we can run away from or hide from. That it's in our law, it's our story, and we need to look at it. And I think only by looking at our history in a truthful and clear manner can we move beyond that and start reconciling the differences as we have and move towards an understanding of where we've been, where we are now, and how we can really live up to that notion that what America says it is an equal and just place for all. I think the whole misconception of critical race theory is trying to say that one race is better than not. No, it's looking at a truth. And it was in our culture, in our history, where it was determined that one race was better than another. And we've worked, we've used that theory to create laws to create well-being and to create a social contract that we still are living by. So to move beyond that, we have to deconstruct that, um, that construction. Hmm. Slavery, obviously the original sin uh, of this country. And Ryan, it can't be washed off the map or anything like that. You can't just will it away or the legacies and all of these things like that. Uh, people want solutions, though. And it seems like everyone wants to get to that goal that Ger Jerry Ann was just talking about in terms of a more just society and country. Uh, why can't we collectively agree on how to get there? I think it's because we're kind of talking past each other like two ships in the night. I believe that we all want the same thing. We want intelligent human beings. We want engaged citizens. But I think where I disagree with Jerry Ann is that while these truths are certainly evident throughout our nation's history, we can see the effects of slavery throughout our history and law within different racial profiling, redlining. Um, I do want to focus back in on what this bill is about. This bill is not saying that you cannot discuss nor teach these histories. If you want to teach about the Tulsa race massacre, if you want to teach about the American South during slavery, you should definitely do so, and we encourage you to do so. However, this bill is specifically addressing the belief or the propagation of the belief that any race is superior or inferior to another. And while Jerry Ann uh, mentions that this was a part of our nation's history, this belief is not a piece of our nation's history as it stands today. This is not the current situation for African Americans. We have such notable successes within our community and with all minority communities. And so acknowledging that it was a piece of our history is certainly valid. However, um, being ensnared by it and continuing to believe that that is the case among Americans and Grand Estaters is simply not the reality. Uh, I have another question there, but Jerry Ann, I'll give you a chance to respond there to, to what Ryan just said. I would say it would be really silly of us to think that there is not systematic systems put in place that continue uh, to propagate racist notions, uh, continue to disenfranchise a group of people, um, 
continue to limit access to certain resources. Um, our schools are a prime place where you see that. Our, um, our financial institutions are a place you see that. So I think it would be really silly for us to think we've moved beyond racism in our country. Well, the conversation will continue. We've unfortunately hit our limit here on Close Up, but uh, Jerry Ann Bogus and Ryan Terrell, thank you so much for joining us to continue the conversation here on WMUR. We appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, you so very much, Adam.